without close cooperation with the IT, communication can no longer be managed today. Hello and welcome back to Offspring Magazine, the podcast. I'm your host, Srinath Ramkumar, and with me today again is Nikolai Herman. Hi, everyone. Always a bundle of energy, Nico. So, of course. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion that Ali and Sandra had with Dr. Marla Feller last week. And that was a really nice interview. I really liked the new format. What do you think, Nico? Yeah, it was great. A man of many words, Nico, as always. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to it as well. So, who are we going to talk to today? So, today we'll have uh, our guest is uh, Dr. Christina Beck uh, from the Max Planck Society. And she is the head of the communications department. And because, uh, like, we're... Uh, we know that communication is very important. We wanted to speak to someone who is responsible uh, for um, the communication, um, not only like uh, from like in a podcast point of view, but also uh, more communicating between different organs of the Max Planck Society and, and so on. Yeah, it's definitely very important to understand how internal communication happens. And I think our first part of this discussion is going to be on internal communication within the Max Planck Society. So, without any further ado, let's get on with the discussion with Dr. Christina Beck. really a great pleasure to have you on uh, the podcast and first of all it would be great if you could just introduce yourself um, so that uh, the, our audience also know uh, who you are. Okay I, I will start um, to make a long story short um, I was born in uh, 1965 I'm a German and I really have a passion for bio biology and therefore I decided to study biology at the university in Hamburg And for my PhD project, I went to Munich to the Max Planck Institute for Biochemistry here in Martinsried. And my dissertation was about the phototaxis in the green algae Chlamydomonas. Eight years after I had left the lab, uh, Peter Hegemann and Georg Nagel, who was at the Max Planck Institute for Biophysics in Frankfurt, made really a fantastic breakthrough with Chlamyrhodopsin marking the birth of optogenetics. So it's not my, not my job, um, but I, I think I was very near to this and was, it was very, very interesting. And mm -hmm. I always followed uh, this field uh, within mm -hmm. the last years. And, and I had the opportunity to, uh, to wrote a really uh, nice article mm -hmm. about optogenetics and, and uh, the first steps To, uh, towards optogenetics uh, within our own science magazine uh, some years ago. Oh, that, that's great. And so after that, you then be, uh, went to the Max Planck Society already? Or were there some steps in between? No, there were no steps in between. So after my doctorate, I initially worked in the area of research strategy and research policy here at the administrative headquarters and uh, then came to the communications department really more by chance uh, in the middle of the 1919s. And the great thing was uh, that the whole area was experiencing rapid changes and there were a lot of new tasks and challenges uh, that just want to be tackled. And uh, I had the great opportunity to uh, start a lot of um, yeah, new, new um, channels, formats uh, with, uh, within the department at the end of the 1990s. So, so here, basically, you started out with communicating science and then now you've grown to, it's, it's more broader, it's not just science communication anymore. So no. which aspect of communication do you feel is most important? For yeah. You. yeah, today it's internal communication. So we, uh, I think you know that we started our social intranet max uh, two, three years ago and now try to convince our institutes to migrate to max so that we really uh, can uh, build up a, a good um, internal community and 
have a good platform for internal communication. I think this is an important challenge for the Max Planck Society because we have so many young people from all over the world and we have so uh, many different cultures in our society and I think we have to improve internal communication. And um, this is one step. Um, another one is, uh, so uh, we started to um, translate our Max Planck journal last year. So now we relaunch, relaunch this uh, magazine. Um, it, I think it will be very nice. We have now a, a bigger group, also people from the institutes, from the PhD net, from the postdoc net are part of this group and now will participate in the future uh, in all the decisions which topics should we uh, take off in, take on in, in our magazine, where should we talk about, which topics we should discuss. And it's also the hope of the president that we can uh, start a lot of more discussion uh, within our society which way we want to go. In, 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 yeah, in several different uh, aspects. So I hope to improve internal communication within the next years. And I also hope that um, many people um, will participate in this process. Yeah, so as you mentioned, uh, I mean, internal communication is uh, really important. Uh, but uh, for example, with Max, I feel not ma that many people are using it at the moment. Um, so uh, um, how do you want to uh, exactly get this uh, going? Because yeah, uh, if people don't know me, each other, Nico, but let, they won't... let me tell mm -hmm. you. Uh, so, mm -hmm. for example, um, at the moment, 12 institutes are part of, of Max. This is only a, a very minor part of, uh, of the institutes. But 25% of the Max Planck, uh, of the um, staff members of the Max Planck Society uh, already use Max. So we have about 60,000 unique users every month. So I think this is, uh, it's, and it's still growing. So uh, within this year, uh, one third of all institutes will become part of Max. So, and, and I think also the number of users will increase. But I think the most important point is um, we must address your topics, for example. And today it's, it's very difficult for us to address your topics because uh, we do not have um, this uh, bigger um, editor group, um, we, which we will now establish. And uh, we are looking for, for a good feedback loop to get more um, proposals. What topics should we take or should, yeah, in, in, our, uh, in our max? And I think this is, this is the most important topic for every kind of communication. You have to address the special needs of your target groups. And so the target group will come only to Max and will read the magazine if we have the right topics. So we need feedback from you as PhDs. What is interesting for you? What, where should we, about what should we talk or should we discuss? And so we, we need to incorporate you in our editorial team. Okay. No, that sounds great. I mean, um, because uh, I was actually thinking that uh, so far the opinion of the PhDs was always a bit uh, not, not I wouldn't say pushed aside, but uh, it was maybe heard, um, but maybe not that much reacted to it. Uh, so I, I'm glad that uh, this is uh, one of the things because, I mean, the PhDs do make up uh, one of the uh, bigger parts of the scientific uh, researchers. Yeah. I'm, I'm hopefully that if more and more institutes come to Max and, and if we uh, are successful uh, in establishing this new editorial team, that uh, we will have a better internal communication and we can better address all the topics which are interesting also for your group. Mm -hmm. So just a quick follow-up on this, because I, I really understand the value of having Max. And uh, the thing is, with at least with the PhDNet and all the communications that we have with PhDNet and the uh, members within so for example the offspring magazine like the podcast team we have a max page and the phd net has a max page the biomedical section has a max page and these work 
uh, when we want to have communication between us. But if within our institute, when we want to have a certain, let's say, a discussion, we wanted to create a team for the sustainability network. Yes. And and for this, we I created a Max page and I tried to get people to sign up on it. But the issue then becomes we have a very good working internet already where we have a lot of... Uh, sort of uh, you know documentation and other other things already very well established in the internet how do we sort of move away from that into a new platform without resistance right because the question is always about adoption rather than uh, uh, you know because people get comfortable with just learning a new thing and settling with it and then they want to move to another platform and then people become more it becomes more stressful yeah i so, know what you mean yes uh, so i think we have uh, some low, lower steps. So f the first thing I, I, I want to know, um, did your institute incorporate the widget with the Max News in your intranet today? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yep. this is fine. I think we have that. So this is the first step to make uh, Max News uh, more visible in all institutes. Um, the next is, okay, You I do not know if you have a team the, the possibility for team rooms also in your institute's internet or if you no. use max for this exactly so for team rooms we started using max. okay so fine so this is so, so so this is what we see that collaboration um increases more than communication on max so we have at, at the moment uh, about thousand team rooms in max and Third, uh, 73 institutes participating in the Max team rooms. So this is uh, increasing um, much quicker than than uh, communication. So and we established a rollout team. We call this. So this is really a group of people who support the institute when uh, the institute wants to migrate to Max. So there is a really a really a support from our side. Um, And there are also uh, uh, um, offers for trainings to get familiar with the functions in, in Max and how to use it. And uh, the feedback we, be, uh, we get from the institutes uh, who are still in the migration process, they tell us that this support team is really very, very helpful. And this is, a, a you can say, a good practice or best practice example. So... Um, I think uh, the situation for the institutes will be a little bit different. So if you have a very old intranet, uh, you will be more convinced now to move to Max. If you have a very new intranet established within the last two years, I think it will take a little bit longer. Uh, but I'm, I'm optimistic that we can convince uh, the majority of our institutes uh, to move to max within the next two years. Okay, I mean, uh, because I think like uh, basically the general problem is like communication, right? That if communication is not done right, a lot of problems just arise from it. Like we have a communication between PhDs, their supervisors. If they don't communicate, then usually the PhDs have to suffer. Or if between collaborations, they don't communicate properly, then this will break apart or they will not be able to uh, stay in their timeline. Um, so... How uh, does uh, or does the communications department feel responsible for taking up that the, within the Max Planck Society this whole uh, thing will be better? So I mean, this is I think Max is one step towards this. Yes, um, Max is only one it, step. So uh, can we address all these topics? I do not know, but I think we should try to do this. And uh, so it's very important to to. Uh, get in contact with all these different functional groups and to discuss how can we improve internal communications within these functional groups. And I, I think we should, uh, we should discuss how we can improve internal communication. And it's, it's really, I can tell you, it's, it's, it's really a, a very important um, goal for our president. Martin Schwartmann is really interested to improve uh, um, internal communication and he's also he personally is really interested to know uh, about uh, the 
difficulties, the problems in the PhD group. Okay, so maybe one last question uh, that is maybe a bit more uh, directed to your position. So, I mean, you, it feels like your job seems to be very stressful as you have to communicate with so many people and they all have different opinions maybe and then bring them all together at one point and decide, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, so uh, how is that working out uh, in general? Is it is it nice to use, enjoy talking to all the people? <clears throat> oh, it's it's nice to talk to to different people. I think uh, now the the job is stressful because there are so many organizational tasks, of course. So, and, and the more interesting tasks are the strategic and conceptual ones, because communication is developing uh, dynamically in terms of the various channels, and also the associated technological requirements. So this means without close cooperation with the IT, communication can no longer be managed today. And I think this will increase uh, even more in the coming years. Mm -hmm. I mean, IT is essentially taking over communication, right? Because the, the, quick, the quick reach of information can be done through technology. And uh, so speaking of quick reaching of information, Uh, we've been talking a lot of internal, but of course, there's also a public personality for the Max Planck Society as a whole. And that that is uh, also something that we need to keep in mind. And uh, it, it's important to pay attention to how, how the public perceives it. So what what do you think, in, in your opinion, how do you think the public perceives the Max Planck Society either in Germany or across the world? And the second part of the question is, how does the Max Planck Society want the public to think about it? Yeah. Uh, so the first one, it's a difficult question because we do not have very good measurements. Uh, so a survey conducted by Allensbach in 2006 found that 87% percent, uh, of the questions persons here in Germany um, associate the term cutting-edge research with the Max Planck Society. And and also um, 83% percent, um I uh, say, okay, innovation or future or interna international cooperation are terms uh, they associate with Max Planck. So uh, they are also aware of the long tradition or the rich history of the society, but um, the, no, uh, um, only um, in some individuals were able to say, okay, Uh, what is the research about? So the most people say, okay, Max Planck is, re research, is doing research in the field of physics. Yes, okay, because <laughs> Max Planck himself uh, uh, did research in the field of physics. Um, but uh, I think the most uh, people here in Germany and also in other countries do not know uh, about the uh, about the fields in, in the uh, humanities, for example, is that we have so many institutes in the fields of legal research, for example, or in the fields of, of um, arts, as uh, there are our two institutes in uh, Italy. We are very well placed in employer rankings. So I think the situation is a little bit better for students. Um, And also in academic rankings, you know, the Nature Index, index for example. So uh, I think we are well known in, in the, really in the international scientific community. But, and now this is very important, in order to, to become more visible to the public as a brand, and this is what you call it, it's brand communication, we must first <laughs> increase brand awareness with our own organization. And there is a lot of room for improvement. So, for example, look at our logo. Um, uh, more than 60% of our institutes do not use uh, the umbrella brand. And they really overestimate their individual sub-brand. We try to give more support for our institute to use the central corporate design. And we, my colleague, Susanne Schauer, started uh, with a talk about brand communication, and this was very, very successful. So she started this talk first in, I think, February 2019, 
with a seminar for for uh, for the um, uh, Max Planck leaders, so the directors uh, who are in in charge for the administrative tasks. You know the Geschäftsführer Director, Managing Directors, we call this, and and oh, there was a big discussion after this first talk, and a lot of directors after uh, what said yes. We should we should uh, discuss this. We we should think about this. And and um, yeah, five institutes after this decided to uh, cancel their subrent and uh, to now to take the Minerva. And uh, another fifteen institute decided to uh, to create a, we call this double logo. So a couple of of umbrella brand and and subbrand. So these are only small steps. But really, we have to improve uh, brand awareness in our own, own institution. And then in the second step, we can do really more marketing. So at the moment, we are only a communication department. But I think we have to discuss if we need in the future more um, marketing. And uh, this marketing at the end can only start with a Uh, umbrella brand Max Planck and Minerva so to get to become more visible in, in other countries yeah I mean one thing that I feel like I usually see is like NASA or Harvard or Stanford whatever it's really nice if they have their sweater and all these and stickers whatever uh, and the Max Planck is missing this as far as I remember I mean there's a store I as uh, But um, like, there's not a lot of stuff there. Yeah, they do not use it because some have their own store, they have their own logos, their own T-shirts and so on. Yeah, I mean, so when we were talking about brand, of course, there's not only the positive publicity, but also the negative publicity that can happen. And I mean, recently, uh, like I think two to three years ago, there was this whole power abuse issue. And uh, also more recently for me, I stumbled upon a uh, documentation that was uh, about publication in, or publishing in predatory journals uh, in Germany. So it was a German documentation. Uh, and they were also mentioning that the Max Planck Society was publishing in predatory journals to some extent. Oh um, yes, but, oh I think this is uh, I think uh, this was not um right to uh, so I think they try to scandalize this topic predatory journals here in in Germany and uh, we have at the end eight publications eight in yeah predatory journals and you have to know that half of these journals um, were uh, before no predatory journals. So it, it's it, no, you cannot say it's it's a problem within the Max Planck Society. And uh, I were in, in direct exchange with my colleagues from the Max Planck Digital Library uh, when we received the questions from the Süddeutsche Zeitung and so on. And I think, yeah, it's a the scientific community has to discuss this topic. I think this is very important. But the scientific community has also discussed uh, this um, very important topic. Do we publish too much? So I think before discussing predatory journals, please, should we discuss our uh, publications? Uh, or, or, yeah, the number of publications. So we have... Um, I, I think there is a tendency to, to split up results um, in small portions and to publish not one big paper, but 10 small ones. And I think this is not a good uh, um, development within the last years. So uh, there, are, there are too many publications, too many bad publications at all. And... Uh, We sh we must find ways to reduce this publication pressure to scientists also. So this is an unhealthy uh, development within science, I would say. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a development within science, but it cannot go unheard because if someone wants to proceed in science, yeah. the publication 
is is a, is beca- it becomes a requirement, which makes people publish smaller, uh, more targeted pieces of research rather than larger pieces. But yeah, I get your point. I just wanted to make this small comment on this um, issue. So it, it's completely different to the uh, topics of power abuse. And, and you know, we had a big discussion within the society. We uh, we have uh, changed. Uh, we, we we made changes in our regulations. And uh, I think the society uh, not only is aware of this topic, but uh, is also now uh, more willing to uh, to uh, also make sanctions to the people uh, who made power abuse. And uh, uh, from a point of crisis communication, I can really tell you that times have changed. The, the society has learned that in the first line, we have to secure uh, the reputation of the society, the reputation of all the people who do a good job, um, who treat their students in the right way, who support them, and so on. And uh, therefore, now this, uh, the first reaction of the society is we have to, uh, to prove the things. We have to look inside, and afterwards we will... Uh, position ourselves in the media so we will give a statement um, and um, I think this is a very very good development now mm-hmm. No, I mean it's nice to hear that the Max Planck Society is taking these uh, things more seriously instead of saying yeah the, all the people here all the directors are uh, doing a good job but rather looking actually at the th- uh, specific cases So No, we have to protect the people, we have to protect the students We have to protect the society's reputation and we have to be very open with uh, misconduct, with power abuse. And um, uh, so there, I would really say within the last uh, three years, uh, things have changed within our society and in a good way. They have changed in a good way. So with that, we've come to the end of the first part of our discussion with Dr. Christina Beck. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with you next week where we have the remainder of our discussion and it's going to be a bit more uh, of an edgy topic, if I may say so right now. Well, let's see. Let's wait and find out. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and see you all next week. Bye-bye. Offspring Magazine, the podcast is brought to you by the Max Planck PhD in the Science Communication Working Group known as the Offspring Magazine. The intro outro music is composed by Trina Tramkumar and the pre-intro jingle is composed by Gustav Carizzo. This episode was produced by Trina Tramkumar, Nikolai Herman and Dr. Christina Beck. If you'd like to give us any feedback, comments or suggestions, please feel free to write to us at offspring.podcasts at phdnet.mpg.de. We'll look forward to your response. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and have a nice week. Bye-bye.